Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. This question comes from uh, Jim Fox, N7ENI, and he is building an antenna, and I found the page in QST where he's building the antenna from, and he just wants to know, is it just a bottom-loaded vertical antenna? Since the twin leads are twisted together, is there more information about this antenna? Uh, so before we answer the question, and we're going to take a look at the actual article, I'd like to pay a special thank you to Charlie Gehring, who is uh, my most recent patron. You too can become a patron in this channel by going to decastler.com slash ke0og. Now, let's look at that question. Okay, this is the article that we're looking at. This was in the March 2014 QST. And the idea was to get on 160 meters. Yeah. Okay, the thing about a 160 meter vertical is if you want to create a true 160 meter vertical off the ground, it's got to be one quarter of the wavelength. Okay? In 160 meters, which is the wavelength, approximately, divided by 4, to give you a quarter wavelength, is 40 meters. Now, 40 meters, you can multiply by approximately 3 to get the number of feet, which would be 120 feet. It's actually closer to 130 feet high. So that's how high this thing would have to be, 130 feet from there to there. And normally when people do antennas like this, they use tower material to put up something like that. It has to be guide, uh, you know, all of this sort of thing like that. We're talking about a serious proposition here. The feed point problem at the bottom is you either have to insulate the bottom from ground or do some kind of a gamma match over here. It gets difficult to do that. That would give you a very nice vertical on 160 meters. And if you've got the money to build a 130-foot tower, have at it. However, you can do something that works sort of as well. Uh, what this guy did was he took... Um, A dipole that he had it was well let's see it's a hundred foot uh, top so it was uh, more like a Carolina Wyndham fed with ladder line okay down at the bottom he hooked those together so that means this whole thing is resonating together and he put a loading coil on the bottom well that's not enough here's a picture of the loading coil by the way the other thing is in addition to lowering it or loading it at the bottom. In other words, if you have too short an antenna, it appears capacitive right here. So you can put inductance here to bring that back into resonance. Now, the it will work almost as well as a vertical, except you'll have a narrower bandwidth. Now, it is also not as well known that if the antenna is too short, and this is only 25 feet, you can add capacitance at the top. Okay, so what this guy is doing, he's got a, a uh, kind of like a Carolina Wyndham, and he's got, this is 100 feet, okay, and he's tying this together, so this makes this a vertical instead of a transmission line and horizontal antenna, and he puts loading coil down here. Now, it's well known if you have an antenna and the antenna is too short, you can add loading or inductance at the bottom of the antenna. You've got your antenna size, you can get it, and if it's still not high enough, you can do the opposite of what you do here up here, you can put out, uh, put a capacitor on top. Well, well, how do you do that? You put 
wires out that are go away from this perpendicularly you can do it in multiple directions if you want okay uh, but what he chose to do was to use a very long piece of wire that he already had up there which is a hundred feet tall and this used to be fed by ladder lines so he just connected those together okay now this provides capacitance I know it doesn't look like it but on an antenna it does because the signal has to go down here and then it gets punched back okay to there which gives this some additional uh, effective length so this is the antenna right here the antenna is the vertical part what is on top is a capacity hat okay and then you have the loading down here so you have a 25 foot piece of wire instead of the 100 foot or 140 or 130 foot tower so it's obviously much smaller much more approachable got a couple trees you can just hang this over here and he shows here how he has bent how he has taken a piece of uh, um, plastic pipe low put wrap the loading coil around it note how many turns the thing has quite a few okay and he gives the specifications in here for what to do for this now um, then he put a piece of heat shrink tubing over this that's a mighty big piece and went ahead and, and uh, uh, shrunk that or else he wrapped it in in tape one or the other held everything in place so the inner conductor in the coax goes to the bottom of the coil the outer conductor goes to the radials now his radials are interesting he wanted really long radials so he kind of ran them along the fence some of them he ran a little bit higher up on the fence I think I would kind of just sort of zigzag these a bit around them more so you can get the different radials away from each other but what he showed was that he could make this antenna work on 160 meters now again this part right here is your compromise this is a compromise antenna all compromise antennas have a compromise now in some cases it's lower power output in this case it's bandwidth okay this will work on maybe 10 or 15 kilohertz on 160 meters and if you try harder to get the SD, if you use a wide band tuner you might get a much uh, broader uh, area than that if you can and you're doing something like this I would put the tuner right here right where to put the coax in there and attach that directly to the antenna that way there's no transmission line that might have highest WR and you can the what the antenna tuner will do is add and subtract reactants so that that thing stays in tune and you can get that pretty much across the band if you got a little tuner down there so to answer the question that came in yes this is a vertical antenna and not a horizontal antenna this is the vertical antenna now I want to make an aside that some people make mobile antennas with a pipe or something three to four feet they put a huge capacity hat on them that's spoked like this and then they put a monster loading coil on this and that will work on just about any band that you want to tune it for again you really want the tuner right at the base of it if you can now the problem with this is the only part of this that is properly radiating is this part in the middle 
This is a tuning mechanism. This is a tuning mechanism. This is your radiator. This is what you actually want as long as possible. Now, the problem here is not only bandwidth, but because it is so short, uh, you have losses in here. The radiation resistance goes down, down, down as you do this, okay? So, uh, just a thing to keep in mind as you're making uh, mobile antennas. There are lots of designs for mobile antennas. So, by the way, this came from the March 2014 edition of QST. Can you still get that? Yes. If you go onto the League website, go to QST, it'll bring up all the QSTs. We'll just show it over here. This is the draft of the uh, May article, the May Ask Dave. Um, if you go to ARRL, okay, and you go into the uh, uh, QST, where to go? QST right there. Okay, and you go to this. Now this takes you into actually a different system. And they've not figured out yet single sign-on for this. So you sign in again with your ARRL credentials. Okay, now this gives you the magazines and it will give you the most recent one. Okay which is all about microphones. This is the April QST. Now, if you go up here to search, you can search in, let's see, one, I'll just use this guy's call sign, WB2HTO, WB2 H T O. Okay, and you search all editions, and it tells you in July 2014, there's an article. Here's the March uh, 2014, March 2014, page 38, and then it goes and retrieves that issue of it and takes you to the article. This is exactly the article that I was using here. And you can, of course, make that full screen if you want to see it. Uh, or you can uh, print. The print's a little funny. Um, when you print, it shows every page of the issue. So you have to go down to where the article is on page 38. Okay, it's there. And there you click those two, select print and then you know where to go from there, okay? So, um, that's what you can do. Now, if you go back too far on QST, you have to go into the old system. Um, let's see. The old, uh, let's see, there, used, there is a, here's the QST archive here through 2011. From 1915 to 2011, you can go to that archive and it searches in a different way. It searches by article, okay? And it's a little harder to find things, but you can find things in here the usual ways by call sign, date, month, page, whatever, and find what you're looking for. So yes, QST archives are quite available and you can look forward to my May uh, issue of this, and there's a picture of a solar panel of mine. So there we go. Okay. Okay, Jim, there you go. That hopefully will answer your question and provide a little additional information about how to deal with compromised antennas. And good luck with your project. You can certainly make that uh, antenna and make it work for you. You uh, will find that it will have a low SWR only in a certain frequency range. But if you have a wide range tuner, especially one you can put at the base of the antenna, you'll be doing great things with that antenna. You can probably tune it on other bands too if the, it's a very wide range tuner. So, there you have it.
If you would like to help support this channel, probably one of the best ways is to subscribe. And then you can click like, and then you can click the bell so you'll get notified of future videos. Also, tell a friend. Uh, tell somebody about this channel so that they'll come take a look. The uh, address for this channel is youtube.com uh, slash Dave Kassler, all one word, D-A-V-E-C-A-S-L-E-R. Okay? And if you would like to help support this channel financially, go to dkassler.com slash support and find a way that works for you. I'm kind of pushing Patreon right now because they have a very good user experience for you. And until we next meet, 73.